in thinking about how social media might amplify outrage, and this is of course just a set of hypotheses at the moment, we're testing these in data as we speak, um, there are a number of ways that the design of social media environments might amplify moral outrage. The first has to do with the, the, the stimuli that we encounter online and the way that information is selected to present to us. So social media platforms make more money the longer we stay on the platform. This means they have an incentive to present us with information that is most likely to draw us in, to keep us engaged, to keep us coming back and spending more and more time online. It's been shown through many different research approaches that the, the most engaging content is content that triggers emotions, particularly moral emotions like moral outrage and, and anger in general is, is one of the most engaging uh, types of, of emotion. So that means that algorithms built into these platforms that select information to show to us based on how engaging it's predicted to be, that's going to push to the top of our feeds content that is likely to trigger strong emotions like outrage. So that's the first component. The second component has to do with uh, how the design of platforms encourages us to share and, and spread outrage-provoking content. So, of course, it's much easier to express outrage online than it is offline. It's really awkward to go up to somebody in real life if you think they've done something wrong. It's risky, they may retaliate against you, it takes time, you have to be in the same physical location as them. Whereas social media gives us the tools to express outrage very quickly and cheaply uh, from our, our bedroom or from a commuter train. And we, don't, we can be halfway across the world from the, the person or the event that, that triggered the outrage. So um, it, it really dramatically increases the, the scope of, of outrage expression and makes it a lot easier. And of course, because we are connected with others, on social networks, if our friends see us expressing outrage and they like it, and of course they probably will because one way to signal your sort of solidarity with somebody or shared group identity is to give positive feedback for moral expressions. And my collaborator Billy Brady and, he's, and his colleagues at, at NYU have shown that um, expressions of moral emotions get the most likes and retweets on Twitter. Um, this means that if you express outrage and you're getting a lot of positive feedback from your friends, that probably is going to make you more likely to express it again in the future. And what's even more interesting is thinking about the literature on habit formation. So habits are behaviors that are expressed without regard to their consequences. So if you're doing something habitually, you're not really thinking about it in a deliberative way. You're just kind of responding to a stimulus. And the quickest way to establish a habit for a particular behavior is to reward that behavior randomly, to deliver rewards at, at random unexpected times. And of course this is exactly how we get positive social feedback on social media. We're getting these likes and retweets at unpredictable times. And so our hypothesis that we're testing we don't have an answer yet, is whether this kind of reinforcement of outrage expression on social media might actually make the expression of outrage over the long term more habitual. So are people reading headlines that trigger outrage and then they're just sharing those to their friends without really thinking about, well, is this true? Is this timely? Is it relevant? And I, I have a really embarrassing story, which is uh, shortly after the 2016 elections, I was you know, spending a lot of time on social media and somebody in my network posted a story that was uh, unflattering for the other political party and um, I very quickly skimmed the article and shared it and one of my friends commented that this was an over five-year-old article and was totally out of context and I thought it was you know, recently published. So, you know, that, at least introspectively, seemed like I had gotten sucked into this feedback loop and was kind of sharing information without really 
deliberatively considering it. And that was a wake up call for me. I was like, oh God, well, you know, and I've, I actually work on these types of issues. Um, and if I'm not immune to them, then uh, how, can, how can we expect anyone to, to, to be immune to them? So, um, so yeah, the, the last component of social media design that, that might also be influencing the way we, we share these things, and particularly uh, this applies to political outrage. We know that people do sort themselves on social networks according to similarity. So liberals are more likely to be connected with liberals, conservatives with conservatives, and it's also been shown by Billy Brady and colleagues that uh, outrage about, well, moral emotions in general related to political issues are shared more within the in-group than between groups. So liberals are sharing moral emotions more with other liberals than conservatives and vice versa. And so, you know, for, for political content in particular, it's not the case that expressing outrage is sort of diffusing uniformly throughout society, but it's, it's, it's diffusing in a, in a more segregated way because of the way that the networks are structured.